Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today we got a topic because once again, I'm a, I'm a man of the people. And on my one of my last live streams, one of the guys said, you know, can you make a video about the role of like marijuana or cannabis when it comes to PE? And so we're not going to take too much time with the video, but there's actually some pretty interesting data that I think might help a lot of guys. And so we're going to break it down. And guys, just so you know, I'm a gigantic square. Okay. I've never consumed alcohol. I've never consumed any kind of drug, including marijuana. And personally, like I disagree with it for social reasons. Do you? I mean, like, please don't fry me in the comments for my choices. But if that's something that's important to you, you know, more power to you, man. You know, it's if it's legal where you are, you know, whatever. But just keep in mind, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I kind of have a baseline like negative bias towards it. And I've seen some of my friends' lives literally been ruined from marijuana. Just keep that in mind. So the first thing we want to talk about is going to be erectile function. There was an excellent paper, okay? It's called a meta-analysis where they basically do clinical research and they look at every single paper that they can find, kind of take out the real crappy papers, and you're left with a concise list of the papers that actually help to demonstrate what you're actually trying to prove. So this paper was called The Relationship Between Cannabis Use and Erectile Dysfunction, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, okay? There's some really good and some really, like, not so good things about this paper. You could tell the guys that wrote this paper, like, are very anti-marijuana. And I know I've already said that I'm kind of anti-marijuana, but I'm also an objective scientist. If these guys make bad takes, like, I'm going to call out a bad take. They use a lot of, like, generalizations. Here's a quote. They say erectile dysfunction is the most common male sexual disorder, and there are plausible mechanisms linking cannabis use to erectile dysfunction. So I'm thinking they're going to talk about, like, Maybe it damages endothelial function or causes like arterial constriction or like some actual like pathophysiologic way that it actually causes erectile dysfunction. And they basically say that cannabis intoxication seems to impair cognitive and psychomotor function and it can increase the risk of psychotic symptoms, including addiction and cannabis use disorder. What does that have to do with erectile dysfunction? Like nothing. I mean, I don't know, minimal something. You could kind of twist the words if you wanted to. And then they say, moreover, smoking cannabis can negatively impact the respiratory system. When we're talking about nicotine, and nicotine actually causes like the vascular constriction. If you haven't seen my video on nicotine and why you should not be smoking, vaping, consuming nicotine at all, please check out that video. Respiratory damage. Okay, so what if you eat marijuana then or use a gummy? Like, it's just, it's just a bad, you know, it's just, it's a very poorly written introductory section to try to be an alarmist. And I'm an alarmist. And I'm like, that's bad. And I'm an alarmist. Basically, what this came down to was about five papers that looked at over 3,000 men and analyzed the role of erectile dysfunction and the risk specifically of erectile dysfunction in guys that consumed cannabis. What they found was that without a doubt, guys, the odds ratio of developing erectile dysfunction was four times higher in people that consumed cannabis. Quite honestly, evidence is like, you know, I would argue very clear here that there's a clear correlation, not causation, okay? Meaning, I say this example all the time, guys, there's a correlation between eating ice cream and drowning. It doesn't mean that ice cream causes drownings. It means that you eat ice cream in the summertime where more people are swimming in the summertime, and that's why there's more drownings. Just be very careful when you, and be analytical when you read these papers. Basically, one of the things they conclude is that they say that the risk of erectile dysfunction is twice as high in cannabis users. Now, in the discussion, they bring up some kind of interesting points, okay? So one of the points, they talk about this endocannabinoid system of like, receptors in the paraventricular nucleus, the hypothalamus, and how actual cannabis binds to that receptor could lead to erectile dysfunction. But then like the very next sentence, they say how it could actually help improve sexual function in some people. And so it's like, well, you know, pick one. I don't know. I just, I really hated this paper and, you know, I like science. And guys, and also they include these sentences that are, listen to this sentence, okay? Cannabis seems to be clearly related to multiple adverse sexual health outcomes, but scientific evidence is limited. So like, how is it clearly linked if the evidence is limited? That's just like a hypocritical statement to me. I I don't know. And then the other thing that they didn't really discuss here is that I don't have a paper to prove this, guys, but there's got to be a link between people who smoke cigarettes and people who smoke cannabis. Because if you're, you know, whatever, I'm not going to try to break down the, the rationale for why that's the case. As far as I know, they didn't break this data down to say, okay, we have just cannabis users who don't smoke cigarettes and what is their relationship to erectile dysfunction? But the bottom line is, guys, through this paper, if you are smoking weed or consuming marijuana, you really want to at least be aware of that and pay close attention to your erectile erectile function and make sure it's not dipping. 
And of course, guys, you want to protect yourself, maximize your endothelial function. That's why I literally developed Vigor. That's by scientific means, like proof, what it does, guys. So check it out. You know, it's an Amazon Choice product for a reason, getting thousands of reviews. If you're interested, check it out, guys. Link is in the description. So the next point that I thought was actually pretty interesting, and I actually learned learned a lot reading this, was actually the effect of cannabis on like the sympathetic nerve system. So guys, here's a medical school hack that I learned. When it comes to the reproductive system, okay, when it comes to your penis, point, meaning to get to a point, getting an erection, P, parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So you want your parasympathetic, your rest and digest nervous system involved, okay? When it comes to sympathetic nerves, that's what's going to get you to the point of erection, uh, to ejaculation, excuse me, or shoot. So point and shoot is a way that you can never forget. Is it parasympathetic or sympathetic innervation, which I'm sure you guys think about all the time. And it's not just me because I'm a giant nerd. The reason why I bring that up, guys, is because in these guys that have hard flaccid pelvic floor injuries, pelvic floor issues, a lot of it is because the pelvic floor muscles are constantly being fed this sympathetic signal, whether it be from the injury starting that. Guys, I have so many videos on like hard flaccid. Of course, I have my hard flaccid course. If you have hard flaccid or trying to get over it, link is in the description. But you have an excess sympathetic system. And so that prevents the relaxation that is needed for an erection. This paper here showed that cannabis actually decreases sympathetic nerve signals. One could argue that if you have hard flaccid because you're sending all of these sympathetic nerve systems, if you were to consume cannabis, you could temporarily have an improvement of your symptoms. If you were a scientist, uh, you know, insert the like, I'm somewhat of a scientist myself meme or whatever, and you had hard flaccid and you consumed marijuana and your symptoms got better, then you have a very good indication that it's not vascular and it's not probably not from like your actual lumbar spine. It's actually from the sympathetic innervation or pelvic floor hypertonia. You can see in these graphs here that you have your your baseline muscular sympathetic nerve activity or MSNA. But if you look at the cannabis level, you can see that the activity is decreased dramatically and they show three different examples of that. And this is the same for the actual burst incidence. So basically how often you're getting these sympathetic signals. So that is dramatically decreased in the people that use cannabis. Interestingly, they did note that in the people using cannabis, they did see an increase in blood pressure and vasoconstriction. I thought that that was, that was kind of interesting. And I'm not going to take too much time breaking that down for time purposes. But if you're interested in me doing a follow-up video, let me know in the comments. Or just say, hey, Hank, thanks for the video about the video or say good work Hank. love you and so guys i do want to talk about some concerning findings when it comes to marijuana because like a lot of people think that oh marijuana is harmless blah 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 and once again guys i have a negative bias towards marijuana but like there's actually compelling evidence for example there's actually part of it is actually talked about in that paper i just talked about with the sympathetic nerve fibers but there are actually vascular changes that occur when you consume marijuana and here is a paper why do marijuana and synthetic cannabimimetics, basically cannabis mimicking drugs, induce acute myocardial infarctions in healthy young people? Translation, why does weed cause heart attacks in young people? I'm not making this stuff up, guys. Some people, it's rare, but there's young, otherwise healthy people that are dropping dead because of the different like cardiovascular effects that marijuana has. And then more importantly, guys, there are a lot of a lot of papers that talk about the actual like psychologic changes that can occur in people that consume marijuana. And there's been several studies that have actually linked marijuana use to schizophrenia. I'm sure all you weed heads in the comment are, oh, hey, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. Guys, do what you want. I'm just presenting the data. OK, like I said, if you like it, whatever, if it if it's how you get through the day, it's how you manage your chronic migraines. You don't eat until you need this to eat, especially if this is a prescribed medication then it's a prescribed medication. I'm not freaking talking to you then. I'm just talking about in general, there are some concerns that you should be aware of. But guys, like back to how this ties into PE. Well, what does it do with arousal? Because I have seen some comments that guys and gals can get super duper horny when they consume marijuana. Is there any science behind that? Yes, actually. Here's a paper. Now, this was just in women, and this was like a survey response, but it had some interesting findings, okay? So here are some quotes. Most women reported increases in sex drive, improvement in orgasm, decrease in pain, but no change in lubrication. They also found that they had higher rates of 
of orgasms. And once again, survey results. And you have to keep in mind, guys, is this selection bias? Because this is a survey that women opted to fill out. And so typically when it's a survey about sex, it's going to be a more sex positive woman that opts to fill it out rather than a conservative woman that views sex as a sin or something. And the other thing is going to be women that are comfortable with marijuana filling out these surveys. I do think that there is a lot of selection bias here, but at least there's an interesting correlation there. What about the data that includes men too? Here is a big kind of population cohort study that they looked at. Once again, correlation and not causation, but they found that marijuana use is independently associated with increased sexual frequency and does not, does not appear to appear sexual function. These are two kind of large, basically surveys that show that marijuana did not negatively impair function, which is a little bit contrary to what we saw earlier, which was cohort studies it was more scientifically done. But so there's evidence on both sides, I guess, just like there can be good people on both sides. Interestingly, you need to look at fertility as well, because there's a, you know, there's this paper here that did research and a lot of this was found in animal models, but here are some interesting quotes to consider. Research supports a role for cannabis in reducing sperm count and concentration and inducing abnormalities in sperm morphology and reducing sperm motility and viability, decreasing or inhibiting capacitation and fertilizing capacity. That's saying that basically marijuana use decreases fertility rates in men. Animal models demonstrate a role for cannabis in decrease in testicular atrophy and reduced libido, contrary to what we just saw, and reduced sexual function. But these have results have not been replicated in human studies. So guys, you need to keep that in mind, especially if you're family planning and you're consuming large amounts of marijuana. That's an issue to consider. And guys, that's one of the reasons, well, that's not one of the reasons that I made virility, but I made virility based on real clinically proven ingredients that actually improve sperm quality and especially sperm volume, okay, or semen volume rather, okay. If you're having any of those issues, you could consider trying virility or if you just want to have some fun, paint some faces, then certainly try virility because it works. You know, there's still some important questions that I have, like, you know, what about the impact that, you know, people often use cannabis to reduce stress and reducing stress can lead to positive outcomes as far as like sexual function or desire. What about that? Also, like how much, you know, cannabis is too much cannabis. Is there a safe amount? And, you know, and the other questions that I'm sure you can think of that I don't have answers to, but it is important to think about. So guys, oh, well, you know, what are my conclusions? So as always, guys, like, First and foremost, like do what you want. Just please hear me now, commenter, okay? If you are going to leave a comment and you're going to make some claim, include a source, okay? Especially if it's going to be directly contrary to what I said. Don't just be like, actually, Hink, that's not true. Marijuana leads to, you know, an inch growth in penile size. Leave a freaking source. I can't stand when guys will just make comments and don't, you know, anyways, leave a comment for the algorithm, but I just... If you're going to make a claim, back it up with science, okay? But do what you want, guys. If you like it, it makes your life complete. Certainly, if you have a prescription for it, then, then do what you want, okay? In my opinion, the evidence is stronger that it can have a negative impact where it's fertility or whether it's actually erectile dysfunction. And of course, guys, I'm going to say that if you are choosing to consume cannabis, especially in larger amounts, then I would argue you need to protect yourself. You know, that's why I have my safety stack, guys. It's in combination of our vigor for endothelial function, our shield for nerve function, and our safeguard to prevent fibrosis. Anyways, guys, hopefully this was helpful. I appreciate you. Links and all the ways to support me are in the description, including my clinically proven enlargement course uh, below. So remember, guys, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah In his office, no stealth, yeah Pinnacle of that below the belt, yeah Checks and balance, he's managing Working miracles, no damage Got you covered, no panic, can't stay calm In the clinic, no vanishing Yeah, with Doc King, it's the way back